So why did I start investing with more money? What's going on team? It's Ricky with Tackwood Solutions. And it's a very common question that I've been getting from a lot of people that have watched me either on YouTube for a while or on Instagram for a while. And I think that the whole purpose of this video, especially it's more beginner focused, uh, and it's talking about the idea, you're probably watching this video because maybe you're thinking about uh, scaling or beginning to trade or invest with more money. I just wanna share my story with you. If you're free to comment down below, if you agree, hope I earn your thumbs up and consider subscribing for new videos every day. Uh, but one of the things that I wanna share with you is there's, there's three focuses, I think what really motivated me um, to begin to invest with more money. And the reason I say invest is I'm not trading as much as I used to, uh, and I'm not putting this money into heavily leveraged or, or, or riskier stocks, to say the least, in comparison to when I normally trade. Um, and one of the things that I wanna share with you is, I began to see myself do extremely well in the real estate market. A lot of you guys, if you guys follow me on Instagram, uh, might have seen that in the past couple of months, I've been very proactive uh, with the different real estate deals that we've done. We've done over 40 real estate deals in the past year and a half, uh, and I've scaled from starting at $190,000 you know, investments or real estate houses, right? Real estate flips. Uh, so I live in Arizona, the cost of living is a lot less. Uh, but from when I started $190,000, uh, all the way to the point of where it is that I am now, uh, to uh, you know the, the household that we have in Paradise Valley, $2.3 million. And I just like took that into consideration that within a very short period of time, I was able to gain experience, gain confidence, uh, and I just went for it. And it was because of the people that I began to surround myself with. And one of the things that when it came down to trading is, uh, especially within my group, uh, I am like the main trader, if not the only trader, uh, and there's really not someone within our group that is trading with more money than me. So I think it was kind of more difficult for me uh, to have those open-ended conversations. And it wasn't until, and again, this is the second point, um, during this whole like GME, AMC, and Dogecoin era that one of our guys, his name's Justin, uh, he took a pretty heavy position on Dogecoin and he was up a little bit over $35,000 in one day. And just to think, again, this really broke me out of my shell. This is a crazy example, but it's just a real example, and this is why I'm sharing it with you, that it's so important to take into consideration of who you surround yourself with. Because of how much I saw him be up within one day, right? Um, I saw the dollar amount that he was invested, I saw how much he was up on the day, and he hasn't been trading for a very long period of time, right? I had set into lock and profits, all that good stuff, and taking into consideration, my biggest green day was a little bit over $11,000. I'm not complaining about that, right? absolutely amazing. My biggest red day at the time was a little bit over $4,000. I think it was like 4.5, 4.4K. And I began to ask myself the question is, first off, I was super excited for my friend, right? That absolutely killed it that day. And then it, it kind of was just like a self-evaluation of like, why am I so willingly and so aggressively investing you know, in other areas, but I've kind of plateaued with trading, right? And that's when I began to kind of like step outside of my comfort zone. And this is the third thing of, it wasn't about just wanting to make more, but I think trading at one point just got so black and white for me where I was trading with $100,000. I understand it's a great deal of money, um, but it was almost the same thing over and over again. I also attribute a lot of my motivation coming from the tech market began to pull on back during that same time. As the tech market began to pull on back, there's this quote saying, right, uh, where every previous dip is viewed as a missed opportunity. Every current and future recession is viewed as risk. And when thinking about tech and you know Amazon, Facebook, forget about Tesla and forget about what I was investing in, but all these different stocks, I began to buy with my investing portfolio these different, you know, long-term plays in the tech industry because I viewed the tech market to be a little bit more on the oversold side. Now looking back, look at forward slash NQ right now. The NASDAQ market has nearly fully recovered. The S&P 500 just two days ago or yesterday hit 180 day highs. It made a full recovery, if not very close to a full recovery to 180 day highs. And it was with that simple idea. And again, I didn't anticipate this. I didn't go in, I'm going to go from trading with $100,000 to investing with $1 million and just, I'm going to kill it. I wanted to test and challenge myself how I deal with the red days. And today is a perfect example. You guys saw that just a couple days ago, I was up a little bit over $80,000, but just like I show you my green days, I of course show you guys my red days. I posted my red day today and it's been down $23,000. And some of you guys might be asking, Ricky, how are you so okay with being down so much? Because I really began to understand the process of the dollar amount that I have on the line and what I'm comfortable and what I'm okay with tolerating. And I think that's the question to ask yourself. It's not if you're just ready. 
to begin to trade with more money, to begin to make more money. But how will you, in the most uncomfortable position, when things are not going according to plan, will you be able to manage that risk? And what does that mean? A very quick example that I can give you is every time that I post the video about, hey, it might be time to sell Tesla, and this is when Tesla approaches the $700 price point, people begin to freak out. Ricky, I can't believe you're saying that all this stuff, but guess what happens almost every single time like clockwork, and even today is a perfect example of when Tesla hits around $700, it gets rejected. And although I am trading with a lot of money, an example I can give you is I at least hold at least 1,000 shares at all times for, with Tesla since I started this challenge. And at most, I will have 26 to 2,700 shares. That's about 1.8 million uh, to 1.9 million. But I'll sell those shares before market close and I'll put myself to around you know, 1.5, 1.7K uh, shares. And I've been able to do this successfully because it's not about listening to the loudest people in the comment sections or in the room, but it's listening to those that you think matter the most and those opinions in which you actually value. And for myself, it's just me. And when it came down to being very aware of that very common resistance level at $700 and with that very obvious support level right around 650 to 600 to you know, 500, uh, 550, it just, I began to do better than the average person that, that was simply just holding because I would sell the highs at that $700 resistance level. It wasn't perfect, but I would load off at those higher levels. And as it began to pull on back, then guess what? Because I sold most of my shares at those higher levels, as Tesla got rejected at that resistance level, I had enough buying power, so I set my future self up for success to be able to have enough money in my investment account, in my trading account, in which that I can utilize to buy at 660 at 600 at 580 and again it's the very simple things in life that people tend to overcomplicate and it all started because of my intention my intention began to change it wasn't so much about what's the most money i can make but it's challenging myself getting myself out of this like comfort zone that i've been in for quite a while especially in that that trading area you know, to really push myself kind of to the next level and see not only can I experience those huge green days, right? I had my first six figure day as Tesla pushed up to I think highs of 720 a share. But guess what? I've also had days that Tesla has been down, you know, $50,000. Today it was down $23,000. It's not that it feels good. It's not that it's easy. I just know that it's part of the process and I can tolerate it. So if you're gonna be asking yourself the question, are you ready to begin to trade more to make more? Are you really ready to trade more and to be able to manage that risk in which that can lead to bigger red days, of course. With great opportunity comes great responsibility and the stock market is no exception. So I just wanted to share why I think it's so important to have those open-ended conversations with those around you, especially those that I think push you out of your comfort zone as I think my friends have done an amazing job with this, not just in the stock market, but in the real estate market and the different markets that we partake in, right? seeking discomfort. And then the second thing and the third thing, of course, is I saw an opportunity with the tech market and I set up a plan. It wasn't to try to make the most money. It was just challenging myself. I see an opportunity with the tech market pulling on back. I, I think I'm ready to begin to invest with a little bit more money. And then testing. You know, I didn't just go in with the 1 million, 1.5, 2 million dollars. I went in with 200,000 and I was like, I can manage this and things were not going exactly according to plan but as I began to scale into it I began to understand and tolerate the process and I think that's what I attribute a lot of my success to so feel free to share any comment sections down below and what I really want to do with this video is for anyone that is watching this video that thinks or is planning to scale and you have questions that you just want to ask me about my red days my green days message me on Instagram my Instagram is plugged in the description don't message me anywhere else. There's a bunch of fake accounts on you know, WhatsApp. I don't have WhatsApp. I don't message you on Facebook, nothing like that. Just message me on Instagram. I have 185,000 followers as of right now. It's Ricky Gutierrez with two Zs, and it's my only Instagram. Message me. Uh, respond to all of my direct messages, and I would love to just answer any question. And it's not about you know giving you the best advice, but it's 
hopefully just sharing something with you that in my experience can get you one step closer to your overall goal. So I hope that I earned your thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe. And like always, let's make sure that we end the year on a green note. Take it easy team.